Welcome back to another review. Today we're venturing to Edinburgh, Scotland, reviewing our first Scottish beer, our first Scotch ale, so to speak, Innocent Gun. I'm sure this is really recognizable for everybody. This is really easy to get. They export internationally pretty well. I'm able to get this pretty much everywhere in Canada. Or in Ontario, where I'm living now, most of the LCBOs here in Ontario will have them. Back when I was in Montreal and Quebec, a lot of the depeneurs, the corner stores, you'd be able to pick up an innocent gun. So they're pretty accessible. Scotland is it's probably one of Scotland's biggest exports when it comes to beer. From what I understand, one of the original craft breweries, one of the biggest craft breweries out of Scotland as well. Innocent Gun is Scotland's best loved independent brewer, producing an award-winning range of handcrafted oak-aged beers, which are enjoyed the world over by drinkers who seek depth of flavor above all else. Right. What, what do you know, what should we know about Innocent Gun before getting into the review? Well, uh, there's there's a lot of interesting things uh, to know about this beer. So if you're interested, definitely check out our Inside the Bracket episode on this. We're going to link it down below. Yes. Uh, the main thing you need we need to know is that it's, as it says right here on the label, and I'll bring it up here, we'll put the label also here on the screen, it says it's barrel aged. So that's something that is interesting. I don't think we, well, yeah, we've had a beer that is barrel aged, but not in the same way. And we'll get into the details yeah. about that. Yeah, we won't get into the barrel aged too much here. Check out the inside the brackets, like Alessandro mentioned, if you want to hear all about um, how Innocent Gun makes use of the barrel aging. But that is kind of what makes this beer stand apart. Being aged in these scotch barrels gives it that extra scotchy whiskey flavor, which is a huge part of scotch ales in general, if you've ever had that style. So I am really kind of excited to break down this one and review this one today with you. I, I was telling Alessandro before we did the review off camera, I've had this one a few times. I was never the biggest fan of mixing whiskey flavors with my beer. But in general, this isn't something that, uh, you know, that I get a kick out of too much. So I'm really excited to see where this goes in the review. Should we get started? Because I'm, I'm actually really anxious to get into this one and break it down. Should we crack them open? Yes, man, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. From Edinburgh, Scotland. Edinburgh is actually one of my favorite cities in the world. I love Edinburgh. First beers first. So as usual, I'm gonna pour a third of the glass. I'll leave room to stick your nose in there and get all those beautiful aromas. Guys, we do encourage you to pick up your own bottle, your own can of Innocent Gun. Follow along, drink along with us on the review, see what you think about the aroma, the taste, the mouthfeel, the finish, the overall, all of it. Experience it for yourself. Our reviews are best experienced with a beer yourself. What do you got over there? I, I had to shake here a little bit because we're getting like a little mountain. So I want to see, ooh. Oh. It's going to take a little while till we get up to Scotland. Ah, uh, that's going to be a long way to go, man. We've got a lot of beers to go before we get to Scotland. I love it. But we've reached Brazil. We, we've covered uh, New Zealand and Australia. So we're, we're doing good, man. We're doing pretty well. We're, we're drinking enough beer, I would say. Yes. You know what? Go first, man. Let me know. What do you think about the aroma on this one? I can smell it from here. This one's got a nice, strong aroma. So uh, okay. bring it down. Tell me what you think. Okay. I'll start. Let's get serious for yeah. a moment. <laughs> Let's get serious. This is, this is very serious business that we're doing. Yeah. Just for a moment. Let's get serious. Whoa! So, yeah, as Joe said, like you crack it open, you can smell it immediately. But it's, that's the interesting thing to me because it's just 6.6%. Uh, I didn't know. It's not that high, but you can you can smell it. Like it's, it's, it's there, like there's a lot of aromatic characteristics. So I get uh, this malted character, um, malted sweet with with a vanilla 
Yeah. I would say like a little bit of brown sugar. Yeah. Wow, it's so inviting. It's it's different. Like it almost it's almost like if you had taken any kind of hop influence from the beer and pushed it on the side. Like say no hops, yeah. you're usually there. Now you're gonna be standing over there in the corner. And, and that's I know, what you right? smell. So as far as like my personal preference, I would say that I do like when hops are showing up a little bit. So, but I would also say that this is incredibly unique in the sense that it it's different. So yeah. I can't give it a three. I, I'm not going to give it a one because it's unique. So I'm going to stick with the two on the nose because it's again, like it's unique, uh, not great uh, in my scale, but definitely good. I'm going to give it a little bit of a refresher. Please do, my friend. That's important. Get those aromas activated. The first thing that I get out of this is vanilla. Yeah. Like the vanilla is really strong. Really, really, really strong. I think the only times I've had this beer was straight out of a can. So I never poured it out into a glass to really experience the aromas. So this is surprising. I was not expecting this much vanilla out of it. Vanilla and kind of like, I get like a, almost like a custard, like a sweet sort of pie, like a custard pie. Oh, wow. That's actually, it's really nice. It's really, really, really nice. And then I also get, once the vanilla kind of dissipates, it smells like Jameson to me. Like that, that particular aroma really reminds me of Jameson whiskey. I really like this. This is a tough one. I think I'm going to go two as well, just because it's very unique. This is very, very unique. I have never smelled a beer with this exact aroma. For me, it's not 100% inviting necessarily. I want to take a sip out of curiosity, but it's not making me salivate. It's a two on three for aroma for me. Vanilla and Jameson mixed together. I think there might actually be like a vanilla Jameson out there. I know there's a coffee Jameson. There might be a vanilla Jameson. So maybe I'm onto something. If not, Jameson Brothers, take the idea and run with it. All right, buddy, let's move right along. I, I, I want to taste this one. I know you do too. Should we take a sip and get into taste? Please, let's do. Cheers, my let's friend. Let's do it. Cheers, my friend. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Woo! That is good. It's so much better out of a glass than it is straight out of the can. Isn't it? Isn't it? It really, it really, really is. I've never had this on tap. Like I said, I've only had it out of a can before. It loses so much of this out of the can. You don't get the aroma. And anyways, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm taking up your time. Go for it. Tell me, what do you think about the taste? So, uh, taste, it's, it's, this is again, like very unique. It's almost, uh, probably one of the few beers that I would say it's all up front of your palate. There's almost nothing happening on the back part of your palate. It's a sweetness. It's a, a little bit of acidity, uh, savoriness in the sense of almost like a tannic element, like woody element, but there's no bitterness whatsoever. Uh, I, I like the description that Joe used, like the custard, like that, like um, almost like a, a, a pie that has vanilla in it, almost like baked apples, like some some, some yes. kind of like uh, stone fruit in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's so so good. Like I mean, I, I'll say taste wise, uh, there, there's very few beers that I've had that have this strong upfront, very upfront and very. Uh, light almost like it's 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 sweet but it's not cloying it's very I mean, you know the carbonation helps it's incredible like it's for the taste i'll be honest uh i'm going i'm going with the three i really like this like the taste of it it's it's inviting like i want to have to take another sip like it's really making me salivate i wasn't expecting this and i'm gonna i'm gonna sound like a broken record on this but i've had this straight out of the can before and i wasn't too impressed i find it it tastes really unbalanced straight out of the can and doesn't have time to breathe and you can't appreciate the aromas with it as well. This is a three on three for me too. I get that vanilla that is so strong right away, but also you get the woody elements because it is barrel aged. You do taste the wood. And of course you taste that whiskey. For mine specifically, it's this bourbon barrel aged, but I mean, you, you taste it, you, you get that element there. But the sweetness is what takes over on the taste for me, that vanilla. That vanilla is so strong, but it's not an overpowering really subtle, but it's, it's there. It's, it's constant. It's you, you taste it and it balances it out. The, the higher percent alcohol on this, I mean, it's 6.6. .6, that's not hugely high, 
but it's high enough that there's a potential for being unbalanced and for it being really bitter and tasting the alcohol, uh, but you don't. This is perfectly balanced. It's a three on three for me as well. It's delicious. So what about mouthfeel? What do you think? So mouthfeel, carbonation is not incredibly high. At least I have it in the bottle that might contribute like in some, some way, but it kind of uh, sticks. It's, it's, I don't want to say it's oily, but it's a little sticky. On, on a little oily. Um, yeah, oily is a good word, I think. Uh, which again, like it's not necessarily my favorite, and I'm debating here, like I'm thinking as I'm as I'm speaking, if it wasn't giving me the sweet feeling on the front part of my uh, palate, I would be leaning more towards a one. But because the taste is so upfront sweet without being cloying, I actually don't mind the fact that it's a little sticky. A lot of times, like I find that like in beers that are overly sweet, that are trying to be something different, like you get that over sweetness and, and then like it just lingers there and it's like overpowering. But this one here is it's, 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 it's sweet, but it's not cloying. It's there and it's, it's, it's just like showcasing right away what, what it smells, what it tastes. So yes. um, I was thinking like maybe on the, you know, on the mouthfeel, I'm gonna go with the one. But actually, like the more I think about it, like it fits in the picture. So for me, it's still a two. Uh, it's not great, um, not my favorite, like absolute favorite, but I would give it a two. Well, I think this is interesting. I'm gonna take, an, I gotta take another sip. I gotta think about this a little more. Please, my friend, think about it. Think about it. <laughs> I think what you mentioned about the carbonation in the bottle could be true. I don't think this is too highly carbonated of a beer, so I think it's pretty much the same. I'm drinking out of the can, obviously, as you can see. The carbonation is not there. That's not a factor in the mouthfeel. I mean, it's it's not flat, but it's not highly carbonated. Um, for me, what I get out of the mouthfeel of this is, yeah, that oiliness, that stickiness that you talked about, that coating that stays on your tongue, that's definitely there. But you know how when you take a sip of whiskey, um, you salivate a lot? And I get like a lot of sort of extra, you know, not to be, not to turn anybody off and be a little gross, but you get a lot of extra saliva kind of around your tongue, right? Yeah. When you take a shot of whiskey, like just your, it, it activates your, your saliva glands. And I'm getting the same thing from this. I can feel the salivation around the tongue kind of kick in and activate. So it has a very unique effect in that sense of the mouthfeel, which is extremely interesting. Uh, so I was kind of leading, uh, and, and not to be a broken record again and repeat what you said, I was kind of leaning towards a one, the first sip that I took. And when I was tasting it, I was thinking, okay, I was thinking ahead to mouthfeel and be like, I think this has got to be a one, right? There's not that much there. But now the more sips that I take and I see how it has these whiskey characteristics in the mouthfeel that are super interesting. Um, you get that little bit of sweetness. It's it's a two. I got to agree. I'm giving it a two as well. Um, it's it's unique enough that it bumps it up from a one. It's not quite a three. If it had some more intense carbonation, I think it could possibly, you could make an argument for getting into three territory, but it's a two. Two for uh, mouthfeel. So what about finish? What do you think about that? So finish, I, I was debating, like it's interesting because you get a lot of um, like the elements that you taste up front and on the nose. But I think that one thing that surprises me that I don't get too much on the nose is that barrel like that uh, oak uh, presence uh, yeah. which which I actually kind of like and I, yeah. I wouldn't say that there's a lot in the finish uh, again like, let me just take another sip just to make sure just to make sure just in case yeah the finish is not incredibly uh, complex uh, you, you you do get taste like that vanilla and kind of uh, pie like flavors but i would say the distinctive note that brings it up a notch for me is that barrel like joe said like that whiskey uh think about it like it's a whiskey so if you've taken a sip of whiskey is there it's not as strong because obviously the alcohol level is way lower 6.5 but you can't yeah. really tell that it was it, 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 it somehow like had an interaction with whiskey at some point yeah so, so i like that I'm not gonna push it to a three because it's 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 not there, but but it deserves a two for me for sure on the finish because it's it's unique. It's something that uh, you know you don't find on a regular basis, and you know sometimes you might be in the mood for it. I don't really want a whiskey. I'll have a beer, but I would like something in the middle. Like this sits right there. 
That's really interesting that you say that. This is kind of like a beer whiskey replacement. If you don't feel like having a straight whiskey, but you want some of those characteristics, you could definitely go for this. You're actually convincing me. I, I, you might bump up my score a little bit more based on what you just said. But you know what, for finish, I'm really enjoying this. I think for finish, I have to, let me take one more sip just to be sure though. Please. Cheers, my friend. Cheers, Cheers my friend. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a one on three for finish. Just because it's very vanilla forward. I find like the vanilla is very overpowering for me on the finish. And I was hoping for a little bit more. I was hoping to be able to taste either the whiskey characteristics, either to get a little bit of that woody element. I was hoping, <laughs> give me a thumbs down. Oh no. No, I was just trying to get the beer out of the bottle. <laughs> out of the corner of my eye. Just so with the setup that we have now, we're kind of off on the side, so we're not really looking at each other. And he's shaking out his beer and I thought he's waving the thumbs down. No, man, like I, I, I understand. And I, I think that it's, it's your point is like, it's interesting. And I like that you're, you're taking a different approach because it's, it's nice that we have different opinion. It, it just like activates the conversation even more. So please. Absolutely, yeah. I, I think it's a little one noted on the finish. There's definitely things that are nice. And I like that you get the burn as though you're taking a sip of whiskey, that whiskey burn stays in your mouth and around your tongue, which is really unique. But it's still a little one noted in, in the taste. All right, that brings us right into the overall. What do you give this as an overall? Hmm. So in this case, for me, it's very easy. I went like pretty much two across the board, just had like a three, which is a little bit of an outlier. I'm going to stick with the two in the fact that it's a beer that um, I think it's uh, it's it's a good beer. Um, it's something that it's uh, unique, but not like outside of the of the chart. But yeah, I think it's overall it deserves a, a two. Yeah, I think a two on three overall is pretty fitting. I'm going to give it the same thing. I think it's definitely not a three and it's definitely not a one. It's actually. You know, I did give it one one, but I was tempted to give a little bit more ones, but it kept getting bumped up because of its originality. Um, it's very unique and it does a lot of things that a lot of other beers, a lot of other Scotch ales don't do. It's, it's obviously well known for a reason. All the elements are there. You get that whiskey, you get the vanilla, you get the sweetness. It's so well balanced. For a 6.6% .6 beer, it's smooth. What I really, my favorite part of this, talking about the overall is that whiskey burn. The cold winter day, you take a sip of this and it warms up your chest and your throat. Um, I love that. And I've never noticed that from this beer before drinking it out of a can. But so I highly recommend anybody drinking this beer to open it up, pour it out into a glass, let the, let the aromas fly and really experience it for what it is. Um, so tallying up our scores for me, that comes out to a 3.33 on five, which in our rating system comes out to be a great beer, which this is, this is a very, very good beer. For Alessandro, it's a little bit higher. For him, it came out to a 3.66 on five, which is still in the great beer bracket, a little bit higher, but very, very good. This beer was fantastic. It's interesting that you gave it a little bit higher on the finish, and I see why. For beers that have some complexity and flavor aromas, pour it out, let it breathe, really experience it. For this one in particular, it makes a difference. So if you drank it out of a can or a bottle before, weren't a big fan, pour it out, you might feel something different. Guys, thank you for joining us. As always, don't forget to open and close your beer brackets. Close it with a nice Scottish beer. Aren't that many Scottish beers out there, but uh, definitely recommend an innocent gun. Take care, guys. Cheers.